Hello, friends, and welcome to episode, wow, 656 of the Juicebox podcast. That number took me by surprise. Today's episode of Defining Diabetes with Jenny Smith is going to be just a little different than usual. First, Jenny and I are going to define a term. We're going to talk about barriers. Jenny and I are going to talk about some situations where you might need barriers between your medical devices and your skin. And then I'm going to read to you a ton of suggestions from the private Facebook group about the barriers and creams and wipes and all the stuff that they find helpful. Little bonus content on the end of a Defining Diabetes episode. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. Don't forget that Jenny Smith does this for a living. You can find her at integrateddiabetes.com. And if you're a U.S. resident who has type 1 or is the caregiver of someone with type 1, I would personally appreciate it if you took the survey at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. All right, Jenny. So my only, my only, 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 only experience with this came when Arden was about eight years old. I haven't thought about this in a while. I wrote a blog post about it a really long time ago. But she was starting to get irritation under her insulin pump. Okay. And I was at my wit's end. I really didn't understand that I wasn't as entrenched in all this back then as I am now. Um, the internet wasn't as helpful as it is now. And I, um, I didn't know what was going on, right? So I was standing there one day, like thinking, I swear to you, like just standing thinking. And I was, I don't know what happened, but I was rubbing my fingers together while I was thinking. And I was like, wow, my fingers are so dry, like dry and cracked. And like, why are my hands dry and cracked? And I thought about it and I thought about it. I was like, I am touching alcohol constantly. Right. I'm cleaning Arden's sites. I'm cleaning her pod sites. I'm always, my hands always have alcohol on them. And uh, that sent me to the internet where I did some Googling and learned that in Europe, I believe, this is a long time ago. So, you know, don't hold me to exactly where, but the standard of care is that you don't prep um, sites with alcohol. Right. You prep them with, I forget what they do, a mild soap and warm water or something like that. And then just dry the site. Mm-hmm. Yep, dry the site. And I switched to that and Arden stopped having irritation and my fingers aren't crusty and hard anymore. Um, so that's how I fixed that. Now, Arden obviously didn't have a real significant reaction because the alcohol, I think, was just drying her skin and then making her more susceptible to whatever was in the adhesive, which I, I imagine the adhesive is probably made out of something completely different now than what it was no. made of back then. Um, but that was the first time I thought about it. And then in the first, like, 20 episodes of this podcast, a woman came on. I can I even remember the kid's name still, Mason, um, because this kid had – like he put on a any kind of medical grade adhesive and his entire body broke out. It was hor- wow. horrifying, right? And but she wanted to use these things. And this woman just, man, she just figured it out. Like she built a concoction of barriers and wipes and everything and and made it so this kid could wear it. Uh, but it's a world I don't know much about. So I'm going to ask you, like, how many people do you think out of ten or a hundred have to put some sort of adhesive barrier on? Is it many? I, I, I think that a, an easier estimate is probably out of 10. I'd say that there's probably one person out of 10, give or take, mm-hmm. um, that probably has experienced some type of adhesive irritation at some point. So like you found, you removed something that was essentially just, it was literally taking all of the natural oils out of the body. That's what 
an alcohol wipe or alcohol does, right? It just, it's a degreaser. It takes everything off. So does it clean your skin? Sure. But it cleans it almost to the point that then when you're putting something else on top of it, that kind of like locks in that dryness and is sticky, you're irritating skin that's now dry and you're doing it over and over. It's not just like one time, right? right? Um, So sometimes it's cleaning up enough of what you're doing that can take care of it. Other people, though, definitely have to use a barrier of some type. Um, I mean, I've seen rashes that are very just specific right around the edge, like the the underneath the adhesive doesn't seem so bad, but it's like right around the edge of the adhesive that gets irritated enough that it almost looks like the pump site is still there Mm -hmm. or the CGM site is still there, even though it's not. Right. Some people have it bad enough that it, it blisters yeah. like horribly like blisters, like almost like you'd see in, um, Oh, what is it? Leaves of three. Let it be. Um, <laughs> you know, are you talking the, about poison ivy or poison, poison ivy? ivy. <laughs> there you go. Poison ivy. I couldn't like, <laughs> I knew the little rhyme, but I couldn't think of the plant. That's it's so like funny. poison ivy, poison oak, which I actually had. I had one of them. They didn't know which one it was, but I had one of them and the blisters and it's so itchy, like unbelievably. Mm-hmm. Right. So some people get that degree and it takes forever to heal. Mm -hmm. And when you have, I mean, any kind of body, but little tiny bodies have such little real estate to begin with that if you've got this big inflamed site on one area that takes an entire month or six weeks to heal up, that's now you're sticking it someplace consistent enough that you can start to cause problems in another place just because you're not rotating well enough. Right. right? right. Um, So, I mean, the kinds of barriers there are some like hypoallergenic types of barriers like um, Tegaderm. There's another one called IV3000. It's like a really, really clear, thin um, that you'd kind of cut a little hole in where the infusion set or the sensor is going to go into the skin, right. um, clean the skin, put that on top of it, put the pump site or the, in, the, in, um, the sensor on top of that. So really it's adhesive is sitting on top of this barrier, not on your skin. Right. That works for some people. Um, Other people as a barrier can get away with just using like a topical, um, kind of like a spray Benadryl, let it dry, put the site on top of it. Um, Or a spray Flonase can spray it right over their skin, same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And that can be enough. Um, So I've seen... I've seen everything I feel yeah, you like. Have to, we have to be a little bit. So I, I went to this. So after this, this lady came on and, and she actually, the kid's name was Henry. That makes me feel bad. Why did I say Mason? I don't know. Damn. I was so confident when I said Mason. <laughs> uh, all right. But the, the, this woman's name was Rachel. And after she was on the podcast, I actually asked her to write a blog post, which I still have on the, on the, the face of my, of my, of my website, because people use it so much, but here, here's, this is from 2015, but she washed the area with warm water and antibacterial soap. Do not use alcohol, completely dry the area. She applies one puff of Flonase. Mm -hmm. Uh, She says you can sweet talk or demand this prescription from your endo if it's necessary. Then she applied a thin layer of Cavalon barrier cream that she got from Amazon. It's made by 3M, C-A-V-I-L-O-N. Again, this is like eight years ago. Then she says she applied a layer of Tegaderm, HP9534 HP, not just Tegaderm. And I'm like, boy, mm-hmm. this lady dug deep, you know? Um, and the Tegaderm comes in multiple sizes too. So if you're looking for it, know the size of your site that you want to cover because mm-hmm. it comes small to big. She listed six by seven centimeters. Um, okay. Place the inset through the Tegaderm HP. Then she said they placed another layer of Tegaderm on top of the pump to provide an extra layer or barrier for the adhesive of, of the detached inset. Not sure what hmm. she means there. When wet, blow dry site with a hair dryer on a cool setting, apply prescription hydrocortisone after removing the Tegaderm HP on, at, on an old site. And she only removes extra adhesive with something called calendula oil. Yeah. So she, this is, I mean, if anybody wants to see it's this, this little kid 
his face is red. He's got splotches all over him. Nowhere near where his medical adhesive is either. He was just allergic to this stuff. Well, I had a gentleman who emailed me an adult, um, diagnosed as an adult, um, who all of a sudden, for some reason, started having irritation around his sensors, Mm -hmm. like had been using them forever. And on a business trip was itchy, itchy around the site and he removed it. And it was like that blistered, that blistered level of skin. And then he was like, well, maybe it's just the site, you know, maybe it got like, maybe I didn't clean it well enough. So he put a new one on. And by the next morning, he had irritation, same thing around the skin. And the funny thing is it went on and into that week places up the same side of his body mm-hmm. where he had no sights at all. Sounds like the same little boy. He had like welty blistery places on his body that had not even been touched by a site. Yeah. It's something else. It's, it's terrible. Um, if anybody's interested, I can't believe I'm saying this and as we're in the six hundreds now, but it's episode 14 of the podcast. So, wow, that yeah. was a long time ago, Scott. 2015. Um, and I, but I, she's got a lot of really awesome. I mean, all the it sounds like she's gone through like all of the products. The only thing that that we would usually caution is what we call greenhousing a pump site or even tenting the CGMs. It. You don't want to tent them because of humidity, right? Right. Yeah. You would, in fact, if I'm glad it worked for her again, N of one, great. Right. Uh, we don't recommend it though because the humidity or any moisture underneath that could actually create more irritation underneath yet. Mm, yeah. Um, but again, her story, it works for her and her son. So that's great. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's a real indication, at least to me that if you, I mean, try hard enough, get the right information, get a little lucky, you might be okay with it. Um, but I see people who just persevere and there's no need for that. Like there's some of these barriers are just, too available and work too, yeah. well, you know? Well, and the one thing I was going to bring up too about this is that in terms of when you might see a seasonal need to use barriers versus other times of the year that it's not necessary at all. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if that's something that you're noticing, don't think that you're crazy. You know, once you get into like fall and winter, your issues go away. Or once you get out of the dry season and you get more into summer, it goes away. It could certainly just be seasonal based on kind of the humidity and nature of the air. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad we talked about this. I'm going to put, yeah. some, uh, um, you know what I'm going to do with this one? I'm going to I'm going to do some work, Jenny. I am going to go back to the Facebook group and I'm going to ask people for what they're using modern day here. And I'm going to put a cool. little, little list at the end of the podcast. Awesome. All right. I mean, I'm busy, but I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very, very You're much. You're so helpful for everybody. Well, I, I'm looking for a pat on the back here because this is extra effort, but I think it's no, I'm just kidding. I No, I think it would, <laughs> I think it would be interesting because. Because this article that she wrote is so old to hear if people have found updated stuff and maybe right. get a good list. So I'll, I'm right. gonna, I think it's a great idea. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Gvoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages two and above. Not only is Gvoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvokeglucagon.com slash risk. Don't forget, there are a ton more Defining Diabetes episodes right there in your podcast player and at juiceboxpodcast.com. You can also find the Diabetes Pro Tip series and many of the other series all right wherever you listen. You might want to check out the private Facebook group for the Juicebox Podcast. It's called Juicebox Podcast Type 1 Diabetes. And please consider taking the T1D Exchange Survey at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Right back to the episode now. Maybe I'm going to read people's suggestions in different voices. Each suggestion gets a different voice. I'm a man of a thousand voices. Are you ready? Ready? 
so I put a post on the private Facebook group after Jenny and I recorded this. The post was simple. It said, Barrier Wipes, Creams, and Patches. If you have a recommendation, please leave it here. Your product or methods may be used in an upcoming episode. Now I'm going to get through this as well as I can. There were 187 responses. I'm quite certain I won't be reading all of them to you. All right. I, I'm sorry. There's not going to be any attribution to the people who left these because it, it'll make it'll just make me crazy to try to add the names. So you ready? Smith and Nephew Skin Prep, which is a protective barrier wipe available on Amazon. In the past, we've used that company's version of adhesive to put over top of Arden's CGM. Currently, we're just using the overlay that Dexcom provides. Somebody here says they use Expression Med patches. This person says what works best for them. Before a pod, they put on Cavalon spray as a barrier. And for removing the pod, lift spray and then lift wipes. They say they work amazingly well. They use Dream Cream from Lush on the site where the pod was afterwards. And then somebody came in and said, I love Dream Cream. I don't know what Dream Cream is, but two people here think it's pretty cool. Someone here says they're using baby oil to help the devices come off to loosen up the adhesive. And they're using a adhesive called Hypofix, which they say is available on Amazon. This person says they use two layers, a Flonase base and then skin tack. That works well for them. Here is a person that says wipe site with alcohol wipe, spray Flonase, dab on skin tack, place Dexcom or Omnipod. Then they put on Lexicam patch for Dexcom or a Pod Pal for Omnipod. When they have a skin reaction, they use hydrocortisone to clear it up. Brandy jumps in here to make a good point. I'm going to read it for you. She said, the one thing I'm seeing here is that there are two different issues. Some people in the thread have a typical mild allergic reaction and they can get away with less prep, but others have major reactions that are almost like chemical burns. She said hers was the latter. And the only thing that worked for her was to completely cover the device adhesive. Band-Aid brand extra large size hydrocolodal bandage on the skin and then the device on top of that. This next person says that uh, when you're dealing with type one and eczema, a cloth feel adhesive patch works better than a latex feel adhesive patch. Their go-to is something called Simp Patch or Sim Patch, excuse me. And uh, they also use the Smith and Nephew Remover Wipes, uh, which is a good company. And I've used some of their products in the past as well. Becky says that she cleans sites after the device comes off with something called micellar, micellar water, M-I-C-E-L-L-A-R, to remove the residue. This person is suggesting something called La Roche Posey Lipicar Bomb. Wow. Uh, for the rashes. Says that their child gets horrendous dry cracked skin in the winter. La Roche Posey Lipicar Bomb AP plus intense repair body lotion. Sounds like I'm doing an ad for it. I don't even know if it works. Here's a vote for skin tack for a barrier. And then they use a stay put adhesive for Dexcom. They've bought peels for fun, but they don't last as long. They say uh, not as long as the stay put brand. Here's another person says Flonase is a barrier for preventing a rash, but you really have to let it dry out or the adhesive won't work well. They also like skin tack wipes and tack away wipes. Uh, there's a person here talking about how Hypofix comes in a two inch roll. That looks like another Amazon thing. Here's someone talking about a wipe they use to prep the skin they say it's like alcohol, more portable than soap and water dries quicker. They don't need Flonase. Brava Skin Barrier Spray is what they're talking about. Brava Skin Barrier Spray. They're also talking about something called hmm, BZK Antiseptic, antiseptic Towelettes. Boy, you guys use a whole bunch of stuff. I have to be honest, I just wipe it off with some warm water and boom, we slap that thing right on there. Um, I'm starting to feel lucky that we can do that. Um, 
Now let's see what we got here. Smith and Nephew Tincture of Benzone Pump Spray. Liquid Band-Aid Spray. And it worked really well, they said. And they've added the Smith and Nephew, but haven't tried it yet. Some people said they use Goo Gone for removal. I didn't know that was for people. Is it? Um, here's one for Next Care MMM 11803 Spray Liquid Bandage. This person says they removed the adhesive afterwards with an alcohol wipe. Hmm. I personally don't like using alcohol, but to each his own. This next person says Cavalon spray is the best. Uh, their T1 is elite allergic, excuse me, to all adhesives. Even breaks out from skin tack. Flonase helps them, but they prefer the Cavalon spray. This person says for a for a barrier, they use tri Jesus, Lord, T-R-I-A-M-C-I-N-O-L-O-N-E spray. Creams, they use baby oil, aquaphor, and vanna cream. Patches, they love expression med patches. And for removing adhesive, they like baby oil, sometimes Unisov. But they don't like the chemical smell. I'll tell you what, that Unisov works really well, but it does stink. Stinky, stinky, stinky. Like after you use it, you almost have to wash and wash the area so you don't smell it. But it is what we use here, Unisov, when we use it. I don't, we don't really use it that often. Uh, someone here is talking about a liquid adhesive called Matisol. 3M Cavalon wipes for T-Slim. Antibiotic cream for after the change. This person says they've tried several different brands of overpatches. By far the most sticky and long-lasting has been Lexcam Adhesive Waterproof. Looks like they make a Dexcom G6 adhesive, this Lexcam company. Another Amazon item. Wow, there's so much here. You guys are pretty cool to answer these questions like this. This person says they're allergic to expression med patches. And they go through a whole thing here. Skin tack. It's a possibility. Currently, they're doing a clean site with hypoallergenic soap, dry Flonase times two, dry Smith & Nephew, dry Hypofix, sugar under patch, then the Dexcom, and Hypofix on top, and a cute sugar patch for design. So, oh, all right. Well, that's nice. Um, wow. this She put a picture of her kid's arm here. It's really terrible. Uh, he, he said he's a... Uh, Allergies are, are just nasty sometimes for people. Okay, Cavalon Cream, Tegaderm. All right, I'm getting pretty far down the list here. Starting to see a lot of duplicates. Although here's a new one, All Care Protective Barrier Wipes. That's A-L-L-K-A-R-E. That one's from Isabel. Isabel, look at you helping out. Um, What's next? This person says the Sugar Patch. Best Patches, the Sugar Patch. Um, Let's see. Lottie D, another sugar patch, skin prep. All right, we're getting down to it here. I think, it's a great thread, by the way. I'm gonna leave it up for a little while in the um, private group. If you go to the top and go to featured, I'm gonna leave this thread in there so you can really go pick through it. Yeah, I think I'm down to, I think I'm down to some repetition here. I'm just, I'm scrolling real quick to be sure. Oh, Goo Gone does make a bandage remover, so they make one for your skin as well. Here's a vote for notjustapatch.com. Tegaderm. Fixie C, adhesive patches for G6s. Fixie C, F-I-X-I-C on Amazon. Expression Med again, Stay Put Medical again. Sensi Care Barrier Wipes and Sensi Care Adhesive Remover Spray have been awesome, says Julie. Sugar patch, they put medical Flonase. What's this one? This one's different. Colopast barrier wipes to protect the skin. C O L O P L A S T. This one, this person says, I have to be honest, what we use. It's hard to beat the free Dexcom over patches. Uh, they'll send you 10 of them every month if you ask for them. I agree. We use them. They're terrific. Arden, of course, isn't allergic to anything. So. Uh, we don't have to worry about a lot of this, but they are great if you don't have any allergies to adhesive. 
Here's one from Josh. He says, Freedom Band for Dexcom G6. Benadryl. Some people use Benadryl spray underneath the barrier to prevent adhesive reactions. Uh, this person says not to use alcohol. I have to agree. All right, guys. I think that's it. We've, uh, we've, as they say, done it. I'm still scrolling, by the way. There's so many lovely people. Here's one. Safe and simple skin barrier on Amazon. Never, I haven't seen that one yet. It's another vote for Fixic. Let's see. Yeah, we've done all right. Wow, I'm looking at some people's pictures of their reactions to adhesives, and they're just terrible. Okay, guys, that's it. 187 replies. I've done a good job of picking through them and getting you every one that was in there. Uh, none of these people are sponsors. Uh, I did not take any money to say anybody's uh, product. I just thought this would be something for you uh, that might be helpful just to hear what everybody else is doing. Again, if you go to Juicebox Podcast, type 1 Diabetes on Facebook, and join the private Facebook group right there in the Featured tab at the top, you'll find this post, which I will leave up there for absolutely as long as it is popular and people are commenting on it. Last thing I want to say is that for a great many of you, if not for most of you, adhesive problems like this will never be an issue. But for the people for whom it is an issue, it is a serious one. And I hope something here today helped you. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the juice box podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please share it with someone who you think might also enjoy it.